right, we've spent three videos already talking about the sculpting, molding, and casting process of a Hero helmet. So it's about time we finish this thing off. Here's what you'll need. A respirator mask, some fiberglass mat, a water basin, a rotary tool with sanding and saw bits, a saw-like knife, and possibly a power drill depending on how thick the resin is, a can of industrial glue, some Bondo with catalyst and a spatula to go along with it, gray spray paint or any other colors that you may need for your helmet, a felt marker, sanding paper spanning anywhere from 120 to 320 grit, rubber gloves, duct tape, blue sheets or newspaper, tinted sheet plastic or grill for the eyes. However, in this tutorial, I'll be using hole punched sheet metal. The choice is yours, really. Clips to lock the helmet together, some thin line tape, straps of elastic thread, Velcro, and of course, your helmet. The first thing we need to do is get rid of that huge ass line down the middle, which is left over from when we cast off the helmet from our mold. Grab your rotary tool and sand it down with one of your sanding bits. After you've cleaned that line off, you'll want to tap onto your helmet and check for any inconsistencies that you may find. Any flimsy or weak areas should be exposed and filled with Bondo. You'll want to smooth out the Bondo as best as you can before it cures, but don't worry if it doesn't look perfect because you're going to be sanding it next. And yes, I know this footage isn't the best quality, but that's what happens when nobody wants to help you shoot and you're forced to film yourself. You end up with this. Overexposed footage. Just bear with me. Once you've covered all the potholes on your helmet, get your basin of water and dab your helmet in it and start sanding. I usually start off with a low grit such as 120, then I go into the higher ones like 200 or so to get the helmet nice and smooth. Again, I'm just speeding along through this to give you the basic idea. By all means, take your time with this for better results. Now that your helmet has been sanded down, you're gonna to wanna to take your gray spray paint and start spraying your entire helmet. If any of you have ever seen what a prototype SH figure arts or any other action figure out there looks like, you'll notice they're usually colored gray. This makes it easier to point out any faulty areas as opposed to using a darker or brighter color. Since I breezed through the last tutorial, the bottom of the helmet is still rather lacking. So if you want to add more resin onto your helmet, it's still not too late to do so. You can simply just use something as a border to paste onto, slice off an adequate amount of fiberglass mat, and then apply resin. However, for the excess that we don't want, we're going to use our marker to map out what we'll be cutting off. Next, we'll take our line tape and apply it horizontally down the center of the helmet for where we'll be right right cutting. Cutting the helmet in half. If the helmet had some crazy design to it where either one half would go past a certain apex, we'd use a marker. But since Strega's design is simply a spheric shape, using line tape makes it easier to follow. To cut out the eyes and other necessary parts that we need to cut out, take out your saw bit, attach it to your rotary tool, and start going to town. You'll want to be sure that you have a powerful enough rotary tool to get past that resin, even more so if it's thick. In the case of the latter, open up what you can with your rotary tool and dig in those cracks with either your saw or power drill until you've taken out all the parts that you need. If you're a beginner, this will take you a long time, especially if your helmet was cast off too thick. After the helmet's been cut in half, we apply our final paint job to it as well as other necessary parts that we need. In this case for the mouthpiece, I'm going to color this silver. I don't want the grill where I'll be looking out of to be seen, so I paint it black like the rest of the helmet. Striga's subcolor is red, which makes my job easy, but it'll obviously take longer depending on your design and what colors you decide to use. Next, we're going to add some keys inside the helmet using resin and fiberglass mat. And if you don't remember how to mix this stuff... These keys have the same principle as when we first made our mold. They're used to help keep the helmet in place and prevent it from detaching. To secure the helmet all together, we add some clips on the sides. But if you look at the screws that are provided with the clips, they don't really look like the most comfortable. As a substitute, I found some really short rivets that aren't as sharp and won't poke into my face and brain like a cyberpunk movie. The clips come in two parts, so measure where you'll be drilling on your helmet and then apply. To secure the clips, I applied industrial glue and then I secured the other side of the rivet inside of the helmet with resin. 
For the remainder of this tutorial, I'm assuming that all of you pretty much have the common sense of how to glue stuff onto other stuff, so we're just going to breeze through this. We took the liberty of designing this helmet to have a good amount of peripheral vision and breathing space inside, so we've applied grills in the corresponding areas. However, whether it be metal grills or plastic visors, these parts inside the helmet can cut your eyes or face if not secured properly. So we take some duct tape and apply it to any or all jagged areas. We also cut open the mouth area for when Strega wants to speak, eat, or smoke a cigar. This part is simply secured with Velcro both on the mouthpiece itself and inside the helmet. Strega's helmet is actually bigger than my head and was designed as such to allow other people to wear it besides myself. To compensate for the extra room inside, we glue in blocks of soft yet sturdy foam. Not only will this make the helmet more snug, but it'll also make it easier for you to move your head when the time comes to do action. All the bigger budget Toku productions use hinges to hold together their helmets. But since this is Garage Hero and we're pretty ghetto, we're going to glue in some straps of elastic thread instead. Just be sure to secure both ends of the thread with fabric and or duct tape. For this helmet, I used some fabric from my ex-girlfriend's shirt. It's not like her ass is going to be using it anymore anyway. You'll notice that I also glued some tiny bits of velcro on the sides where the clips are. This is so we can apply some patches to hide the clips. Both the patches and the eyes of Strega are made of foam with vinyl glued onto it. We'll be talking a bit about that said technique in an upcoming tutorial. Later on you'll be able to add things like LEDs to light up your helmets, but that's far too advanced for you guys yet and might be covered later on when this series actually does well or if people actually bother to watch it. And that is how you make a hero helmet. That's it for this episode of Tokusatsu Film School. If you enjoyed this video, please share it with your friends. Also give it a nice thumbs up. And also subscribe to GPTV for more upcoming content. Comments, questions, and suggestions are always welcome and we do respond to them. So please leave a comment for us in the comments section. You can also contact us on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+, or even directly through our email, garagehero7 at gmail.com. Also be sure to check out our original Not Safe For Work Tokusatsu Gun Caliber, as well as our Jidai Geki Fantasy web series, Ayakashi Samurai, which was shot in collaboration with Toei Company Limited and the YouTube Space Tokyo. Tune in next time for more Tokusatsu Film School right here on Garage Pro TV. Yeah.